Hello everyone and welcome to another video. You know, I've been playing around with the Flight and Airy Designer Series paper that's in the upcoming celebration brochure. This paper is available for free. You can get this paper for free when you make a $50 purchase in the new upcoming January to April mini catalog that will be available starting on January 4th. So you cannot get it until then. Um, but starting January 4th, um, the catalog will be available uh, online or it's possible if you have a demonstrator that you might be getting a catalog in the mail or may have already gotten the catalog in the mail. If you don't have a demonstrator and you would like to receive a paper catalog, uh, please um, email me. I will put a link below and I will be more than happy to send you a catalog. I'm not able to show you the mini catalog until it goes live, but Stampin' Up! does allow demonstrators to show sampler, samplers. And this is one that I put together for the Flight and Airy Designer Series paper. It is so, so pretty and it has quite a few coordinating colors, as you can see. That's kind of a lot of colors. It is just so lovely and delicate and pretty. Now, I know not a lot of people, or I shouldn't say not a lot, but not everyone loves birds. Um, but even those who are not, you know, super fans of birds um, would have to admit this is really just such delicate and pretty paper. So... I just wanted to show you this paper and I want to show you now what I've been making with that paper. So let me bring them out one at a time. This is a tri-fold um, card, <coughs> excuse me, with a belly band. And there you go. And it's a great way to feature your designer series paper, whatever it might be. You don't have to have a lot of the paper. Um, you can piece it together and put together a really lovely card. And if you only have a small amount of paper, it's a great way to just use it up. And um, all you would need for this one, uh, for an extra piece of base of white for your sentiment. <coughs> so pretty. And then your belly band. You wouldn't necessarily need the belly band. You could do a large sentiment label and attach it here and have it be, go across the uh, panels you can do that as well but i chose to do for this card i chose to do a belly band i just like the way that they look then here's <clears throat> here's a simple simple card featuring the designer series paper and mostly like the flirty uh flamingo and i made it into an early happy mother's day card this is, and, and this is the, the card base is Boho Blue. Just simple, simple, right? But but when you feature your designer series paper, it, it does all the talking. It's just so pretty. All right, this is one that I featured in a previous video uh, when I was making the video of how to make an envelope flap card. So I took some Flirty Flamingo cardstock and tore it on the edge did the same thing with the flight and airy designer series paper just to give it a little bit of visual interest um and it put some ribbon across it it really is just a very very simple card to tell you the truth not difficult to make and really just lovely and then i put some of those um brushed brass uh butterflies that are still um available and those put those on there for additional interest now this one um i used the dye from winter meadow which is an online exclusive so it's something that you can get and that's what i use to die cut the arch obviously the paper is flight and airy which you cannot get 
until January 4th, and you can only get it when you make a purchase of $50 or more. I put some um, baker's twine on, on it, and um, just a very, oops, dropped something on the floor, I can get it later. <laughs> A uh, simple uh, sentiment label, and again, the brushed brass uh, butterflies on it. N not difficult to make. This is another one that I used some scraps. Um, I used uh, the stylus shape dies to cut a circle out of some paper, but then I had this square left over, so I tacked it onto this card, punched out, used my circle punches, punch out some stuff, uh, you know, a basic white circle, um, punched out a little smaller one from the designer series paper, popped it up on dimensionals, cut a sentiment label, pop that up on dimensionals, use the uh, pool party gem dots, and this is obviously the designer series paper is from Flight and Airy. Easy, easy. This is the envelope flap card that I recently did a tutorial on. So you just open it and there's your message. So and isn't this nice? And so you have the, the paper, the, the design on this side as well. If this is something you're interested in learning how to make, you can check out my YouTube video um, that I recently did and I'll give you all of the details. And this is a similar one that I did with just a little bit different paper. So those were super cute. And then I used the paper to decorate the envelope flap. Now here's the one that I love the most, the birdhouse. And this birdhouse um, was, I cased it from the celebration brochure. Um, it's in the brochure where the Flight and airy paper is, and but it doesn't say how you make it. And I was, I spent some time trying to figure out how to make it, and I figured it out. What was throwing me for a little while was how the how to make the roof. Clearly, it was die cut, and I couldn't figure out how it was done and what was used to make it. And I, so I started going through the, the mini catalog, didn't the new mini catalog and could not find anything that matched it. And I went through the um, annual catalog and I'll cut to the chase. This is what I, this is the die. This is the die that cuts the roof. And it comes from carousel horses. I wouldn't have never imagined. It didn't even dawn on me. So um, it came from this this set, um, and we're going we're going to we're going to use this scallop piece as well um, to cut the to cut the scallop on the bottom. So I went like I said I went through the catalog and. Um, couldn't find, you know, not knowing that it was the carousel horses. I went through the entire catalog and completely missed it. I knew that it was a die that I was looking for. I went through it and I didn't, apparently, I, I just, my eyes went right over it and I didn't see it. So I started from the beginning again and it was my second pass through that I finally found it. That's the one. We don't need, we won't be needing this part, but this piece. Once I knew what the die was, which of course I did not have, I had to order it. And then I had to wait, what, like a week and a half or something to finally get it before I could make this one card. But that's how it is with us, right? You go, oh no, I have to order it. Now I have to wait. Although sometimes when we order something and by the time we get it, we forget what it was we wanted to make. In this case, I did not forget and I was waiting for it patiently. So it finally came and I made it. And this is the one I'm gonna show you how to make today. So why don't we get to it after I've been chatting for almost 10 minutes and you're probably saying, hurry up. All right, so let's, let's get to it. So what we're gonna do is start with the card base. And we're gonna cut a 
piece of basic white at your typical card uh, measurement, five and a half. And then you're going to score it at four and a quarter. Okay. And that is your card base. And I'm going to now fold it and just give it a little burnish. And there we go. So that's the card base. And then for the mat, this is part of the designer series paper. And I'm going to cut that at five and a quarter by four. So this is just a quarter of an inch smaller all the way around. So we're cutting that at five and a quarter by four. Okay, there we have that. And put that aside. And that will be the layer that will go right on to. I'm going to go ahead and layer it and I almost hate to do that because isn't that paper so pretty it's just so beautiful and you hate to tack that side down but that's that's I need the other side there's so much beautiful paper and it's very difficult sometimes to um oh, there we go. And it's sometimes difficult oops, to um, decide what you want, which side you want to tack down. Because you're going to have to sacrifice a pretty side in order to get the side that you need. Okay, so there's that. We're gonna set that aside. And we're going to, now we're going to, um, oh, you know what, let's die cut that piece. This is gonna be with a piece of pecan pie, and the die is from Dainty Delights. I haven't used this for a while. cat is behind me scratching at the window wanting me to open it but it's cooled out today so I don't want to open it let's see all right so I'm just using the the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine so I'm just going to put this right on top and some of those easily pop out those die cut pieces nice okay now we're going to set this aside To, now we're only, only going to use part of it and I'm going to use some liquid glue but I don't want to tack down the entire thing because we need to be able to thread some twine through this underneath it um, to be able to make it look like the birdhouse is hanging from it. So I'm going to just put it, put the um, put the adhesive just on the little leaves. And let me see where I want. I want it to go near the top. 
and then this side I'm gonna leave and um, wait until I'm done before cutting it. Now you can wait to tack down this piece until you've done this, which I probably should have done, but that's okay. So I'm just going to put some small amount of adhesive on the leaves. And not on the branch because I want to leave the I want to leave it open. I'm just gonna just put it on the bottom ones too. Just make sure I have enough. Okay, and then figure out where you want it to go. Now remember, we want to make it seem like it's hanging. All right because I'm going to hang the uh, birdhouse right about there. Okay. Get my scissors. I'm just going to snip off the part that I don't want. And that's all I need. Okay. So that part done. All right. So now we need a piece of another piece of design series paper, um, which is this is the back side. You know, the one with the, has a lot of uh, pinks on it, bubble bath. But we're going to use the fresh freesia side because I want to die cut the, uh, the top of the birdhouse. And then we're also, well, let me just take it one step at a time. I'll, I'll show you what we'll do next. All right, so I need the die, this die. And we're going to, again, bring out the the mini, putting, now all I really want is the top part. I don't want this, it doesn't mean that you can't die cut that part, you can, but I'm just going to put it on there with the bottom, just along the edge of the paper. That's the only part that I really want. so nice. All right, so now we need to, let me just move that the scraps out of the way. Plates out of the way. The next step is to take a piece of Fresh Freesia Design a Series paper. No, that's not the one. And I need to cut it down. Uh, let's see. I thought I cut a piece down, maybe I didn't. I'm going to cut a piece down to, um, let's see. I think, let me measure, let me measure. Um, this needs to measure because it's going to go and it's going to, oh, I'm out of, I'm out of the camera. I want to just have my paper match. All right, so that is two and three quarters by like one. I don't really need, it's going to be about one and one eighth. Okay. 
I'm going to make it a little bigger because uh, we're going to be snipping some of it off with this dye. So, tell you what, I am, oh, my, my little, I don't know if this happens to you, but my cutting blades and my, it appears that my scoring blade fell off and I didn't even realize it. They fall out all the time. Maybe it's time for me to get a new, um, a new trimmer. It's, I've gotten new blades and new scoring blades. I thought that maybe that was the problem. It's not. Uh, they just don't stay in place. They fall out all the time. All right, I'm going to cut this at two and a half. Um, by three. All right, and that'll be more than enough and I can trim what I don't want. I'm gonna bring my die cutting machine back. For this, we're putting, I need to, it's going to cut that that way. Um, and I just need it to be big enough to give me a scallop and then cover these holes. So am I gonna have enough? Yeah, I will. All right. I might put it down a little bit more just to make sure. All right, let's see how we do. Let's put it through. Sorry for the shaky shaky. That'll do it for the die cutting. And as you can see, the way that we did it this way gives us uh, the scallop that we want. Now the other side, you know, looks like that. And, but we want that scallop. It's a little off kilter, but that's all right, because I'm going to, all right, so I'm going to cut a little bit of it off. I'm going to cut this very, very, very edge. So I have that, and then I need to just measure. I'm sure there might there's a better way to do this, but you know what? I'm just winging it. All right, so I think that if I do that, it will give us the length that we need. It does. So look, see, I got the exact length. And then I'm going to glue it down, and then I'm going to just trim around it. Okay, I just need my, I just need my glue. Is this not like the cutest thing ever? I mean, I love, I just love the project. I, I mean... When I saw it in the catalog, I just was so excited. And then I was like feeling discouraged because I couldn't figure out where, where it was. You know, where the, what dye was it that put it, that put it together? Until I finally figured it out. It took me a while, but I finally figured it out. And now I'm sharing it with you. All right. 
different. Oop. Now I want to just, I'm just going to trim around it. And I know that not everybody is a fan of fussy cutting, but you know, honestly, this is not really, there's not much involved with this. Okay. And then the top, there's a little, there's a little bit up there, but you know what? It's going to get covered by the twine that I'm going to, I'm going to cover, put some twine on the top by making a bow. Do you not love this um, glass mat? It is like, it's been so great. It's such a fun mat to have and it's giant. It's like 17 17 inches by gosh I forget what but it's uh oh my gosh it's so great um unfortunately for anyone that's not a demonstrator the only way that you can get this is by joining Stampin' Up joining my team uh starting on January 4th um so during the celebration period um if you join uh Stampin' Up if you want to become a demonstrator no requirement to do any selling you can just keep doing what you're doing and you don't you can just you know keep selling to yourself but the beauty is that you would get 20 percent off of every purchase that you make um you know how you know we love getting those um michael's coupons for 40 percent off just one item and we all run to the store because we want to um, get that one item for 40% off, but um, that's just one item. And occasionally we get a 20% off Michael's coupon that, um, you know, for your entire purchase. And that's great. 20% is fantastic, but it's only one time. But with Stampin' Up, once you uh, join my team and become a Stampin' Up demonstrator, um, you um, will get 20% off everything that you purchase every single time, including clearance items, the online exclusives. Um, there is no, uh, there's no limitation. You get 20% off. And if you should go up a level, you'll get 25% off of everything that you purchase. You can't do better than that. And you would have, get access to a, um, an exclusive demonstrator only Facebook page called uh, Demonstrator Planning Place where other, oh, you know what, I should probably tell you, where other demonstrators show their um, projects and give you uh, inspiration and tips and tricks and Stampin' Up! Come, Stampin' Up! Uh, uh, folks come on and uh, show us their demonstration. It's all, it's all great. Um, this piece of paper measures, this is the birdhouse. So this is the main part of the birdhouse, right? But actually, before I tack that on, I have to cut the hole for the bird birdhouse. Um, this measures, hold on, where's my measure? My ruler. It measures and two and a half. Two, two and a half inches wide by three inches tall. Okay, so that, and then what I did when I was cutting the paper, and this is the, this is a bigger piece of that paper with all these birdies on it. Um, I was looking for, you know, and here's the little birdie. How can I cut it so that I can get him at the bottom so I cut along that side and then along that side. So, but you can pretty, you don't need to have a bird in there at all. You can just do the paper. So that's how I did it. Now I have my stylus shaped dies to cut the, the hole in the birdhouse. Now it's a one inch circle die, but I will tell you that if you have a one inch circle punch, wait, oh, that's not the right one. Uh, 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 this one, this one, this one. 
sorry, the smallest one. Um, if you have a one inch circle punch, that'll work. My one inch circle punch broke right in the middle of when I was using it for another project, all of a sudden it completely broke. So I grabbed my stylus shaped dies and the smallest circle die is what you're going to need. So let me just grab my die cutting machine again that I said we weren't gonna need, but we obviously do. And I'm going to put my little birdhouse on it and put my circle kind of right there, you know, sort of like about one third of the way down. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna run it through. And then you end up with a little circle in case you need a little circle for something. I don't, but in case. All right, let me put my die back there so I don't lose it. I love these, these uh, magnetic, uh, these magnetic uh, cardboard holders, die holders are from Stampin' Storage. Um, most of the dem other demonstrators use them as well. They're very sturdy. It has nice chipboard on the back, so it's not flimsy. I've used um, some other uh, magnetic uh, sheets, and they're very flimsy. I hate them. These are high quality. You get like 10 in a pack. They're fabulous. So that's what I use to... Um, to hold my dies so that they're not flying around and I don't lose them. Okay, well, let's go back to the card. Now that I have my little hole there, oh, let's see. Now I need to put the backing because I have that little, this is also the same design of series paper, but this is the PKM high side. And I just need to, to die cut a slightly smaller uh, piece. And uh, let's see, let me get my trimmer. I just need to cut like one and a half by one and a half. Let me just try that and see how that goes. Because I want to pop it up and put some small dimensionals behind it. And I need a piece that's slightly bigger that will allow me to put some dimensionals on it. So we have that. And I'm going to put the dimensionals around, the mini dimensionals, obviously, around the outside of the circle. Let me throw that away. I think that you know, I think that whoever you end up giving this to, and you might just end up keeping it for yourself. I think I may want to keep one of mine for myself. Um, whoever gets it, whoever you send it to, is going to absolutely love it. And they're really going to think that um, you have, you know, that you have really just gone, stepped it up. And they're going to wonder how you made it. Lots of people are going to wonder how you made it. All right, let's see. We'll put this, put this down. And it's nice and popped up. See, there you go. And now we can add the top, the topper. And I'm going to just put some adhesive just across the, the very top. because I'm just gonna put that scallop piece across it. Let me put this down. Let 
And then you see on the back, you have it like that. And there we have, we have our birdhouse. Obviously, it's looking so, so cute, though. I love it. And what we're going to do as well is um, pop this up on dimensionals because the underneath part is popped up. And if we were to just glue it down, the middle would pop, it would look weird. So um, I'm going to put some dimensionals. Just the regular dimensionals. You know, I have to just tell you too that when I, <clears throat> you know, when I placed my order, my demonstrator order for the new mini catalog, which we as demonstrators, that's another bonus of becoming a demonstrator, we get to um, order a month before the catalog goes live to everyone else. So that's fabulous. And whenever you place, you know, an order, whether it's the new catalog or whenever, whenever you might be um, placing an order, and if you place an order of $150 uh, or more, you get stampin' rewards. I mean, this is for everybody, customers, and doesn't, it's not specific to, to demonstrators. But when I, when I, when that happens to me, when I make an order of one hundred fifty dollars or more, and and I get um, ten percent of my order, I get in free rewards. That's what happens. You get ten percent, um, free. I select. Things like my consumables, like my glue and my dimensionals. So I, you know, getting another stamp set, sure, that's that's great. But honestly, what I use the most are my consumables. So sometimes I need new, I need more basic white cardstock. So I'll try to get my, um, I'll try to stock up on my basics glue. Uh, designer series paper, uh, cardstock that I'm running low on or God forbid run out of because there was one time a few months ago that I went to get my basic white cardstock and I had one sheet left and I hadn't ordered it. I, uh, I had to go borrow it from a friend of mine who was a demonstrator and she lives in the next town over and I had to borrow some from her until I got my order. I mean, I didn't do a great job of managing my supplies, but you know, so I uh, so I order it uh, as my rewards, and I get it for free. I love doing that. Now I'm going to use for the <coughs> for the hanger. I'm using the oh, what's it called? Oh yeah, the Baker's Twine Essentials Pack. I only have two left, um, and it's like. Crumb, I'm using the crumb cake one, and it also comes with white and black, which I've used up. I didn't realize I had used it up. It's been a while since I've used it, and I got. I think I have to order more <coughs> because I want the white and I want the black, and so I'm using the crumb cake, <coughs> and I'm going to. I'm going to measure out what looks like overly long amount of twine, but as I found, it actually isn't. I'm gonna do a double bow, but first, actually, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, <coughs> all right, move some of this other stuff out of the way. And oh, it rolled away, that's what happened to it. I need to cut a piece for, let's see how I can do this. Now, what I want to do is lift this up to be able to put the twine under it. And that's, that's all I want to do. Okay, can we lift it up? Let me hold it with my finger. 
Yep, there we go. So that's all you just because there's no glue there was no glue on it remember so all we did was put the glue on the leaves so this would leave this free freed up so i'm going to tack it down i'm going to i'm pulling it down and i'm going to just put a glue dot underneath it i'm going to put the glue dot right here and then i'm going to press the and then i'm going to trim off the edges so you just get a glue dot These things are great too. Love glue dots. Okay. And I'm just pressing that down in place. And I'm going to cover it with a bow, so uh, not gonna worry too much about it. And then just trim off the excess. So now you have your hanger and it's pressed into a glue dot. All right, so what I did was I took um, a double length of the same twine and I'm going to make a double bow. need to make it a little smaller. It's a bit big. Now you can use whatever twine you happen to have. I mean, if you have some other twine that you have on hand, and I like the twine instead of the ribbon because the ribbon will be a bit big. All right, now I'm going to just grab a glue dot. I'm gonna press the back of the twine into the glue dot and pick it up that way. And then press it right where the right where it meets in the middle. And trim the excess. a little bit long. Okay. And there we have that. So now I, now I'm not going to go to the trouble of doing the uh, sentiment label. You can see I took a piece of fresh freesia and I stamped, um, from the, let's see, I said I stamped just a little note because I didn't, I couldn't find um, a sentiment at first that I felt matched the scene. And I almost thought this was kind of cute because it says just a little note, like a bird singing the notes of a bird. But, and that I got from Notes of Nature, just a little note to say hello. And then on the inside, I took more of that designer series paper. So I put in a piece of fresh freesia and then I lined it with a piece of the, a scrap piece of designer series paper that I didn't even have to cut because I already had it. And then the You're In My Thoughts I got from the new Thoughtful Expressions um, stamp set. This one, so pretty. And this is one of the new ones as well. Lovely. Absolutely think they're fabulous. Where do you see the catalog? You're gonna just go crazy over it. So that's, I'm gonna, once I finish the video, I'm gonna put my little um, sentiment and then finish the inside. But that's how you make a birdhouse with the new flight and airy designer series paper and i hope you love it 
I'm going to put um, more information in the uh, description below. And I hope that on January 4th, you, um, when you have a chance to see what's fully available in the catalogs, um, that you'll have fun shopping. And don't forget that for every $50 you purchase, you'll be able to select something for free in the celebration catalog until February 29th. If you're going to have so much fun, there's so many great products in there as as they usually are when Stampin' Up! releases a new catalog. It's been so fun. I appreciate you visiting with me and that you, that you um, stuck with me. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye for now.